A clutch in Valorant is when the last player alive wins the round for their team. These are always huge moments that can completely change the outcome of a game. So which teams in Valorant are the best at clutching and which teams are the worst? And how much do these clutches actually impact the result of a match? I looked at data from every single major professional match last year to find out, and here are the results. We're going to start by setting some criteria. I want to mainly focus on practical situations that a team actually has some control over. What I mean by this is only looking at winnable situations. From a previous video, I looked at the probability of winning every single man-to-man -man situation. For example, the probability of winning a 1v3 is about 4%, and the probability of winning anything more than that is basically zero. So we're only going to focus on 1v1 and 1v2 clutches, which are much more likely for a team to win. Last year, VCT teams won a total of 2,136 winnable clutches, which again are 1v1 or 1v2s. That's a lot of rounds on the table. So which teams actually took full advantage of these situations? This graph shows the win rate of a team when put into these clutch situations. Here were the top 10 most clutch VCT teams from last year. Obviously, Fnatic is up there, and EG's high clutch rate definitely contributed to their championship win, but surprisingly, Cloud9, a team that never even went to Masters or Champions, had the highest clutch rate of 47.6%, which means that they are winning nearly half of all their winnable clutches. We can see many instances where this comes in handy for them, like during this elimination match against Lev during LCQ. During their game on Pearl, C9 won 6 out of 7 possible clutches and won this map by 4 rounds. Losing even 1 or 2 more clutches could have completely changed the outcome of this game. But since C9 never played international competition, it's definitely more interesting to see how clutches helped out a team like EG, who ended up becoming the world champions last year. During the lower bracket final at Champions against Loud, EG won map 5 on Bind with a 13-8 scoreline. That's a 5 round differential, but they also won exactly 5 out of 6 winnable clutches this game. If just a couple of these rounds went Loud's way, we might have never seen EG in the final and we would have had a completely different world champion last year. Les Nose is out, it has to be a half stick all the way through, getting off a bit, what a round! So it really does seem like clutches can have an incredible impact on games where they go your way. A couple clutches here and there could have completely changed who the VCT champions were last year, but it becomes even more interesting when we look at who the worst clutching teams were. We know that C9 had the highest clutch percentage last year, which is a little bit unexpected, but not that weird considering that they were a top team for the majority of the Americas League. But see if you can guess the worst clutching team from last year as I move down this list. Here's a hint, it's another team from the Americas League. Funnily enough, it wasn't Crew, who were actually amongst the top. Sentinels were right in the middle of the pack, and surprisingly Team Liquid, who won EMEA, were in the bottom half with last place finishers Carmen Corp and DFM. But the worst clutching team of 2023 was actually 100 Thieves, who barely won 28% of their winnable clutches. Now if you're not already aware, 100 Thieves were tied with EG for 6th place in the Americas League, which meant the final playoff spot. All 100 Thieves needed was to win one more map, and it meant EG would have never been to playoffs or Masters Tokyo, which was definitely extremely important for their growth as a team. Looking at all the maps that 100 Thieves lost during the regular season, we can see that in many maps, they lost significantly more clutches than they won. In many instances, they actually lost all of their 1v1 and 1v2 clutches. Now, if we compare how many clutches they lost to their round differential in every map, we can see that in many cases, 100 Thieves lost more clutches than rounds that they lost the map by. If 100 Thieves just won a couple more clutches in maps against Furia, Loud, Leviathan, C9, or even Sentinels, there's a very high possibility they would have won the map and EG's underdog season would have never even happened. The entire course of VCT history was changed because 100 Thieves were the worst tier 1 team in the clutch. This might be weird to hear since some of the best clips from VCT Americas were insane clutches from 100 Thieves players like this clip I'm playing from Cryo. But all these clips were very unwinnable situations which are extremely rare and outliers in the grand scheme of clutch scenarios. 
The truth is that 100 Thieves would lose the vast majority of their 1v1 and 1v2 clutches, which are the real difference makers in close maps. Even for a team like Fnatic, who barely lost any maps last year, when they lost close clutches, they also lost maps. When we look at Fnatic's clutch stats for all of their losses, they lost every single match where their opponents won more clutches than them. Many people were surprised that they lost the EMEA championship to Team Liquid, but when you look at the number of clutches that they lost during that series compared to the number of rounds that they lost the maps by, you'll really understand what happened. We also shouldn't forget that the impact of clutches goes way beyond the current round. Not only does winning a clutch directly save your team's economy in many cases, it's also a huge morale boost for your team and a huge morale hit to your opponents. We can see this effect when we look at the probability that a team will win the next round directly after winning a clutch. We can see that your chances of winning the next round are increased anywhere between 6 to 12% depending on the type of clutch you win. Keep in mind that the sample sizes for 1v4 and 1v5 clutches are quite low, but there's no doubt that your team will gain a clear advantage going into the next round. Now we've spent most of this video proving that clutches are extremely important. Which players are the best clutchers and what can we learn from them? Here are the top 10 most clutch players from 2023 who played at least 40 clutches to ensure a reasonable sample size. Many of the names on this list are definitely not surprising, but I was surprised by the second most clutch player who was T1 Saya player. Saya player is T1's duelist, who seems to be a great player in that role, but also seems to be an elite clutcher for them as well. But the most clutch player last season was Fnatic Boaster. Many people always criticize him for being carried by a superstar team, but he wins more than 54% of these very important clutch rounds for Fnatic, which as we saw before, are absolutely key to their success. Let's break down this famous 1v2 clutch from Boaster against Loud on Ascent. Boaster has A all to himself and gets the spike planted. He smokes door and then hides in hell. This smoke creates the threat that Boaster might be on the other side holding it, so Aspass is forced to dash through. Now right before Aspass gains control of the bomb, Boaster takes a godly timing to peek. If Aspass was able to take control of the bomb inside the Omen Smoke, this round is as good as lost. But Boaster prevents that from happening. Now Boaster's position is known, but he uses his paranoia to reposition and now Tuis has completely lost him. Boaster goes around wide on the smoke and once it fades, he wins an easy fight. The most important skill that Boaster showed during this clutch was to stay patient, but decisively take a peek before it's too late. He didn't rush the clutch by pushing loud or immediately swinging them. He created chaos with his utility and waited for the perfect timing to swing right before loud could gain back control of the round. And the best clutchers in the world all have this skill. Just like Saya Player shows in these two clutches on Pearl. In this first clip, Saya Player gets two kills and then backs off to A main to play the 1v1. He patiently waits for a better timing and then commits to a swing right as his opponent is clearing the site. Being calm and patient is key, but you have to take your opportunities decisively before it's too late. For anyone who is curious, here's the rest of the list of clutch win rates for every single VCT player who played at least 40 clutches last year. You can pause here and take a look. Okay, so there's one last thing I found about clutch data that may be the most interesting thing of all. When looking at all the clutch data for 2022, something really stuck out. Here were all teams from 2022 that played at least 50 clutches during international events. Does something seem funny to you? It's definitely cool to see that DRX had one of the highest clutch rates, but what's more interesting is how loud the 2022 champions had one of the lowest clutch rates by far out of all teams on this list. But didn't we just spend the entire video proving that clutching out close rounds was very important? Well, when we look at all of Loud's wins, they almost never won more clutches than their opponents, but still managed to win many matches. This graph shows Loud's clutches throughout all the maps that they won in 2022. And on many occasions, they didn't even win a single clutch like against Optic, DRX, or G2, but they still managed to win those maps anyway. 2022 Loud were living proof that you can be an incredibly strong team without relying on winning close rounds. So next time your teammate loses a close round, remember to give them that obligatory, nice try. Because even though it mattered, it also probably didn't. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Remember to drop a like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.